Thanks, guys, so much. I'm here with Torgi and Sonia and Haley. And here comes Loralee. Hi, honey. Come and sit by me. It's good to see you, family. It's been a whole year since we've had a conversation. Doesn't even seem nice like to see it you is. too. Yeah, it's been a whole year that's passed by. I see um, that uh, everybody has their sparklies on today. We're all about the sparkles. You're all about the sparklies. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you for coming. Um, Grandma, you came from Austin yep. today. You went to work at 5 o'clock this morning. Yep. <laughs> and here you are, a supportive family. Sure is good to see you guys. I hear there's good news. There's been a graduation since we've talked to you. Yes. Tell um, us what's happening. Well, Haley, even though she was premature and has so many issues, the doctor said that she is as healthy as if she was born at full term and even advanced in some of her um, skill level. So we're really excited for Haley. Congratulations, and thank, thank you, you for showing us a picture. You sent us a picture of the certificate. Yeah. Because that, that is a very well-earned certificate. Mm -hmm. so, so Haley's feeling pretty good. Oh, she's great. Okay. All right, four years old. Yeah. All right, and um, so take us from the beginning, if you can. Is that okay with you? Sure. Take us, take us to the beginning of your journey, and it's been a journey. Um, seeing the isolet over there is definitely a reminder. Yeah. Um, the giraffe isolet? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, it was, it was scary. I mean, 27 weeks, I unexpectedly felt my, you know, my placenta, and, uh, and I didn't have any time. Um, it was just right away, emergency C-section. Um, Were you at home when that started happening? I was. I was at home and took Loralee um, across the, to, um, across the neighbor's house and and um, yeah it was it was tried to deliver I tried um, but this little girl had an umbilical cord wrapped around her neck twice and when she was being pulled out um, the doctor pushed her back in and gave her a little black eye because she needed to go back in um, in order to save her life. Um, so, at the time, did you realize that there was complications going on? Did none, you know? None. Okay. None at all. I mean, besides being extremely heavy um, and tired. Yes. Um, I gained a, quite a bit of weight quickly with the twins. Um, but as soon as, as soon as, um, you know, that happened, the emergency C-section, I didn't, I didn't have a say or anything. It was just out. Mm -hmm. I, I, had, I had no idea what was going on. I woke up in a haze. It's almost like a dream. I, I remember seeing uh, Xavier and and Haley in their little isolates. And yeah, no, he's here with us today. You have your brother at your house. He's here. Right here. It's his ashes. What are you holding, honey? Xavier, it's his ashes. It's his ashes. And mm -hmm. you brought him with you today. Mm-hmm. At at what point? Did you know there was going to be some tragic news coming your way? Uh, waking up. <laughs> waking up. Um, it's heartbreaking. I'm a mom, and I wanted to be there for my kids. And the only way I could do that is by calling, you know, calling in. How are my kids doing? I didn't know if I would be able to produce milk. I didn't know. I was in critical condition myself, lost a lot of blood. I didn't know waking up. You what my life was. You were in Toma and the babies were shipped out. Yeah. Here, Grandma, put your, your mic up. There you go. Tell us what. Yeah, she was in Toma and then they um, med flighted. One went on the med flight and one went on an ambulance because they can't go together. And there wasn't enough room for more than one on the med flight because of all the doctors and stuff. Um, so Toma actually delivered them. And then they were med flighted and, like I said, ambulance up there. And they were absolutely awesome. Yeah, a I'd big shout to out to Toma Memorial. 26 people flew yep. in, uh, drove in, um, hustled and bustled because they're not equipped for what was about to happen. And mm -hmm. that, you know, kind of care is, is really a wonderful thing. When did you meet up with the babies? Um, I didn't get to see my children until after I was doing well. Um, I had to have a blood transfusions, um, you know, antibiotics and stuff to get healthy. Um, so it'd probably be about like five, five, six days mm -hmm. until I was gone, um, from Toma Memorial, um, had to do the victory lap, you know, after a C-section, you have to do a little lap to right. make sure that you are able to walk. Um, but it, it, it was really scary to even fathom, you know, everything that was happening all at once. Um, 
I didn't know how it's going to be. You know, I've never been in a, in a NICU before. I have no idea what the terminology is. I, I don't know who is taking care of my kid. I mean, it's so hard. You're just sitting there thinking, are my kids being cared for as, as much as I love them? You know, they're, are they they're me. Still alive? <laughs> you know, you know, that's a big worry too. Or did they make it? You know? Yeah. So didn't know. you saw them the first time you saw the babies, they were in the, each in a, an isolate. Yes. Yeah. Side being by pushed side. out through the door, ready to go. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Um, and then being able to see them was heartbreaking. I, I, what did you see? That's okay. So I didn't see, I didn't see my babies. I saw things wrapped around their head. I saw wires and things on their hands, um, you know, with wrappings of gauze and stuff. Uh, I didn't see my children. Um, and I didn't know what to expect, you know, um, and, you know, that you can't see your kids right away. You need to wash your hands for a little while. And then, you know, make sure that you don't come with, you know, stuff that, like necklaces and stuff like that. Stuff that I had no idea. It was, it, it was, you know, I was birthed for 41 weeks with my first. And it was perfect. It's, it's like a, a natural gift to just be handed your children. You breastfeed and you think everything is going to be fine. And then when I walk in here, I'm reminded that... Not everything is fine. It's not. Some things just don't go the way that they want to go. Sharing your story with us is um, probably one of the toughest yeah. things that you can do. And we want to thank you so much for doing that. Because what you're doing is giving people a real insight into the joys and the sorrows that happen bringing our babies into the world. Yeah, it's... It's, it's a reality. I mean, it's a, it's a precious gift to, just to have that wonderful natural birth and everything is fine. And I had that with Laura Lee. And then to go from what you think is about to happen to what in the world just happened to my body? What happened to my children? What happened? How, you know, how am I going to be able to take care of my, my you know, Laura Lee? Thankfully, my mom, you know, took care of her. <laughs> Every um, time I've seen you, your mom's been right at your side. She's my rock. She yep. really is. Um, and my kids are my heroes. Mm. Um, when Haley and Xavier were born, to look at them the first time, it was actually scary. I mean, they were so tiny, so really super dark red. And there was like, you know, no hair, no nothing. It was just like a form without it all there, you know what I mean? It, it's hard to know what you mean, but you're doing, a, you're doing a, an incredible job explaining it to us. Okay. It's, it's hard to know. It's like, like I don't want to say a blob, because obviously you, can, you know they got eyes and nose and all that, but they're just so red, so little, it's just like somebody put a piece of clay there and, and folded, molded it into them. When did you, um, when did you lose your precious baby boy? How old was he? You just went straight to it. <laughs> um, it Xavier was 19 days He was old. 19 days old. I, so you sat by his side for those days. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm so grateful because I, you know, I asked the, the NICU staff before, um, you know, something just told me. God just told me, you know, hold your babies. Hold your babies. And I asked, I said, you know, because it's not... It's not like they're just going to hand you a baby. That's it. It takes like 20, 30 minutes before I have my kids on my chest. And, and, um, and they did. And that was the only time I got to hold them together. And I got a picture with it. And I was just so blessed. So blessed. Because, I mean, they're the symbol of, of your love. They're the symbol and the, the growing population of, of change. And... And they told me after trying to give some medications to Xavier that um, his PDA um, didn't close, um, that he had to have surgery. Surgery always comes with complications, and I know that working at a hospital, too, that, whew, that breath of release, that, okay, the surgery went well. And you're thinking everything's going to be well, and it, his little body just couldn't handle it. Yeah, he, he caught infection. Couldn't. And so... And so I remember 
the very last day when I saw him, I, I asked, I, I prayed, I looked at him and I told him, it's, it's okay, it's okay, Xavier, I love you and I don't want to see you in pain anymore. And so I asked him, I said, if you could do me one, one thing, can you open up your eyes so I can tell you I love you to you? And he did more than that. He is that, he's that fighter, my kicker in the stomach, not Haley. He was my kicker, wasn't he, Haley? Yeah, he kicked you a lot. Uh-huh. <laughs> that he opened his eyes, and not only did he open his eyes, he lifted his hand that was covered and with tons of weight bearing down at him, but he reached up his hand to me and looked me in the eyes, and I said, I love you. I will always love you, but it's okay. It's okay. You know, you can, you can go. I mean... His body was vibrating because you know, he couldn't breathe on his own. His, his, that perfect red complexion that my mom was talking about wasn't there. He was green and, and blue, and his body just, it looked like death, and I knew it was coming, and I knew, and I, and I didn't want to. <laughs> Trust me, I didn't want to. I wanted to be the mom, hold him, and just heal him <laughs> just like that so that way he can come home. Um, and, and, and it was hard. I, I had to deal with two, two in critical care where I didn't know what to do besides love them, pump as much as I awfully could, go to work um, so I can provide for my family. And It's unimaginable <laughs> thinking about having to get back to yeah. a normal. It's oh, unimaginable. Yeah. And there's, there's no definition of normal, I've, I've recognized. There's, there's no normal. It's... Everybody has their own footprints, and everybody has their own journey. And I tell you what, I wouldn't wish this upon any mama. Um, it's heartbreaking. I and, the, and the hard part is she lost one, but yet she still had one fighting. Right. And Haley could sense anything because of all the kangaroo care and of stuff. Of course. So she can't let that feeling come about because she would know it. And we, they didn't want that, so she had to try to act Thank you, cheerful. Thank you, holding her even though she lost one what's happening here is you have two beautiful daughters yes hanging on to you <laughs> yes because mommy's upset yes and they don't want their mommy to be upset and you have beautiful daughters i do <laughs> they're just they've sticking taught me so much they have isn't that something how we can learn from them uh, isn't that mm-hmm. something I, I oh gosh i i did i learned i learned hard i had to tell them then it, you know the next day that he he passed because I got to spend some time with him, you know, hold him, and actually see his face for the first time when he passed. Um, mm-hmm. So I, I did. I, I spent that day with him, with my ex-husband, as if we would have when he came home. You know, read him books, sang to him, and we gave took pictures and gave him a bath. And I still have everything at the house except for um, one plaster um, sculpture of his hands that was at my mom's house because... These two girls, yeah, they'll break it. <laughs> and that's really precious. <laughs> Give them a kiss, yes. That <laughs> I had to learn so hard the ability as a mom to shut down and realize that the game is not over with. I have to deal w- w- with more. Now I have to cut dry. And just like you, cut to the question and sit down and ask, is my daughter going to die? Don't sugarcoat anything anymore. Just tell me, is she going to die? Because then I'm prepared. <laughs> um, and they either said, oh, no, she's, she's, she'll, she'll make it. She'll make it, Torgi. Um, <laughs> and then she coded right after we had that meeting. <laughs> mm-hmm. And it was the scariest thing in my heart because I was trying to be respectful to the other kids because at that time they were together and, and, you know, she's, she just had breast milk. We're trying to get her to learn how to breastfeed. And she turned black as could be. And I didn't know what to do. I mean, I just, doctor! And then they came over, and it's like, here, here's my child. Save her, because I can't. <laughs> you know, and it's so hard as a mom, because that's, that's embedded in your soul, that I was trying to be respectful, not to scream. But after about a minute, I was like, no, 
I started screaming at her, and I'm like, no, you're not going to die. You're not going to die. Today is not your day. Not your day. You, mm -mm. I'm, I, I let one go to heaven, and the other one, you're staying here. <laughs> you're staying here. Um, and, and luckily, after screaming, then she puked up the, the formula, and she was just as well as she could, that she should be. But you know how scary it is that all of a sudden your, your kid, you know, just quoted, she's, up, you know, and you're thinking that she's going to die to all of a sudden two days later, oh, she's ready to come home. Oh, my gosh. What? No. No, 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 no. I, no, I, wait. Wait a second. I, I don't know if I'm ready for this. Like, <laughs> I had to do all these classes that, that normally you don't take when you are given your first child. I didn't have fire safety training <laughs> or CPR or anything like that. And, and I was so nervous bringing her home thinking mm -hmm. I'm never going to sleep. Yeah. I'm going to watch her like a hawk. Everybody's going to wash their hands. <laughs> you know, <laughs> don't, if you're sick, don't, don't come, mm -mm, don't come in my house. <laughs> well, that protective nature, that's what oh you're going to do. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, and it, you know, and it was so amazing of how much support is around you during this time. And sometimes you feel that lonely feeling like you're, you're all alone. You're all alone in it by yourself. And you're, you're not. Exactly. <laughs> so I had to learn that too. Yeah. Um, but I had to learn to lean on other people. Um, yes, um, I'm gonna call the doctor and say, okay, she's having a fever right now. Is everything okay? She'll be fine. Uh, um, you know, actually right now she's, she's breathing and she's not breathing very right. Um, we'll take her in right away. Um, cause she had uh, ammonia. We had to take four days in the hospital with that, and that's kind of a remembrance of how it was before. And then she had her tonsils right. removed so mm -hmm. that way she could breathe at night because um, she was like, <coughs> just like, it was almost felt like she was choking. And, um, you know, as soon as that was done, it helped her out with her breathing. But You should tell them that while she was in the NICU, she had pneumonia twice. Yep. And almost didn't make it from that. Oh, my gosh. She had a lot of issues, my little child. And it's just so remarkable hearing, you know, for, I mean, she is just a miracle. Two pounds, five ounces, heart murmur, you know, ammonia. Um, she had so many breathing issues, infections, just all the stuff that she overcame. And you're so humbled by it because you're like, wow, she is here and she's right in front of me. And then when she sings to me or when she hugs me or holds me, it's, it's such a huge, you know, a more meaningful than, than anything in this world to me. Most amazing, powerful bond I think there is. Mm -hmm. I think there is. If you look really close at her forehead, the day Xavier passed, a little tiny cross is right yeah. there on her forehead. It's the most amazing story. Mm -hmm. So there we, it is. We think yeah. he passed so she could make it. I am. Um, so yeah, when the when the, the doctors were, class. you know, after they told me, you know, that Xavier passed, I was. <laughs> I'm like, I don't want to sit in this room with you telling me stuff. I, I, you know, I, but I'm, I'm gonna sit here and be a good girl, because <laughs> I, I want to scream. I wanna. I wanna just tell the world how angry I am that he's gone and he is always gone but he's not because he's with me <laughs> and yes honey yes you can go play thanks for asking <laughs> you know that um <laughs> she's off that here here the doctor was telling me you know what went wrong with him and the cloudiest day and it was just so bright the l room filled up with so much light and then after that light and she's telling me you know we're still going to be here and you know you have to continue to fight because you have that other little girl in that room and she she needs her mama and it's like I got this I got this um then that's when I looked at my daughter and she smiled and she had that little cross on her forehead and she didn't mm -hmm. have that before because right. you can see it by the pictures it wasn't there until after he passed it's that another miracle. Mm -hmm. It is. She, she's it's, a miracle. She, she really is. Well, when you came in today and told me that she graduated and she's already ahead of things with the four-year scale, I mean, that. Oh, yeah. Speaking as if she is 12, 24 months. Look what has happened in the last four years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot. 
Um, I mean, when, when Haley came in, I didn't even look up because I could hear her. And I thought, wow, she's talking more than she talked last year. <laughs> oh. It's amazing. She can talk. Yes. And talk. And talk uh. and talk. <laughs> <laughs> when you um, found out about Children's Miracle Network, had you known about it before they reached out to help? You know, I, I'll be honest. I didn't really truly know about the organization. I just knew it existed. I didn't know exactly it would do for my family and it's 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 a huge it's a huge um like that air balloon kind of that we got you and we're gonna lift you up because we're never gonna let you down and that is like the hugest you know relief of they stress awesome. for me how did they help you um well education as the previous mom was talking about um you know, learning about the terminology, learning about what resources are available to me, um, the the gas vouchers um, in order to go an hour back and forth every single day um, is a huge help financially for me. Um, to the, the just Food simply vouchers. the meal vouchers mm -hmm. helping out when I could stay here, so that way I could stay here and and be with her when she was at her critical need and she needed her mom because. That time is precious. Time is, that's the only gift that we have for each other that is the most precious thing that such as this organization has given me. Well, you know what you're doing? You're giving back to them yep. for coming that's in to tell. I'm, and that's, that's what, what you I'm guys here. are doing. And I know you know that mm -hmm. because this takes more strength and more gumption to come back and share and tell us. But you know what? We look forward to seeing you each year. <laughs> yeah. And you know, the good thing is, is when you come back and we see what's happening with Lorelai and with Haley, it's like the best news ever. Yep. Yeah. It's the best news. Yeah, yeah they said that uh, the twins were million dollar babies. And. Oh, and then some. And oh my then goodness. some, yeah. So all the help we received was immense. It was awesome. Well, yeah. we can't thank you enough for coming in. Would you like to add anything before we close? If someone's on the line and you're thinking, I want you to feel. I don't want you to think. I want you to feel the intensity of the time that you're taking to listen to me is exactly what you're giving to this organization. That is the precious gift. It's not the money. Money always is financial relief. But you're giving back in so much ways by just picking up that phone and helping families like myself. And I continue to do it every single year because of that reason. And I donate every month because just when you think that no one's there, they're there. So just feel with me because I'm giving you the hugest hug in the world because I'm such a loving, hugging person <laughs> that I'm giving you that hug over the air. And I'm telling you thank you in advance. I can't think of a better way to close. Your strength is just amazing. It's amazing. Thank you, whole family, for coming in to see us. And you know what? We're looking forward to seeing you next year. Hopefully we'll see you before then. All right, thanks for joining us. You're listening to the Children's Miracle Network Radiothon, a service of the Lacrosse Radio Group.